The efforts to obtain Mengele's extradition proved to be fruitless. Nevertheless, Mengele's fear of capture drove him deeper into the heartland of Paraguay. His destination was the remote eastern part of the country near the Paraná River. Very few outsiders are seen here, and those that come to look for Joseph Mengele do so at their own risk. Just before In Search of arrived, two film crews, one British and one Belgian, had their film destroyed and were expelled from the country. In Search of could only film using a camera hidden inside a car. Mangala spent a lot of time in the Piranha region on the estate of Alban Krug, a wealthy German industrialist who surrounded him with four bodyguards. But what protects Mengele more than anything else is his uncanny ability to avoid capture. This is the German-style resort town of Hornau in central Paraguay. It was here in 1964 that Mengele came closest to being apprehended. A group of survivors of Auschwitz learned that Mengele was staying at the Hotel Tyrol. They came here and rushed up to his room, only to find it empty. Mengele had left just 10 minutes earlier, after receiving a warning phone call. He was in such a hurry that he left in his pajamas. There are times when Mengele ventures outside Paraguay, but these times are rare because they involve a higher risk. One such occasion was in 1968, when Mengele went to Bermuda to meet some relatives. Wiesenthal learned about the trip and immediately sent a man to verify Mengele's identity. But once again, Mengele was already gone. The closer one gets to Mengele, the more elusive he seems to become. In Paraguay today, he is wrapped in legend. Wiesenthal must constantly guard against false rumors and mistaken identities. Wherever Mengele is in Paraguay, he has the protection of the Stroessner regime. There are times when even the remote Paraná region does not seem safe enough. Mengele then takes refuge in a large military zone in central Paraguay. It is a place so secure that even the Paraguayan police cannot enter it. In 1977, two events involving Mengele took place that are here reenacted for In Search Of. One of the last times Mengele was reliably spotted was when he was seen talking to two unidentified men on the Brazilian side of the Piranha River. Border checkpoints are few and far between here, and there is no record of his having made a border crossing. The most recent attempt to capture Mengele was made in that same year, when it was discovered that he was due to cross the border from Paraguay to Argentina at a given place and time. On that day, several agents were placed on the Argentine side of the border. Mengele's car was spotted, and the license plate noted some five miles from the crossing. But at the last minute, the car turned around and headed back into the Paraguayan interior. Today, Mengele's whereabouts can only be pinpointed by checking the most reliable sources in Paraguay itself. In search of made contact with members of Paraguay's opposition party who verified that this hardware store belongs to Joseph Mengele. Those same sources brought us to the small town of Altos. This road, which leads to a well-guarded gate which we were unable to photograph, is the access to a hacienda named Campo Condesa de Cue, where Mengele lives today. Thirty-three years is a long time, and the Holocaust seems far away. Now, there are two men who remain as living symbols of that moment in history. The hunted is 67. The hunter is 69.
Look, if he will die before me, he will not die in peace, because he has no rest. He is going from place to place. And this is also a part of a sentence. And uh, you cannot uh, make a deal with the Lord that I must survive Mengele. My last wish will be, uh, in this case, to get Mengele. But nobody knows. I hope always that there's no perfect crime. And even the, the biggest criminal and the best criminal make a mistake. And I am waiting for his mistakes. There was once a world in Europe that no longer exists, but it left behind an echo. The history of man is a history of crimes, and especially uh, the Jewish history is a history of full of repetitions. It's only the technology uh, is changing, but the hatred remains the same. We need Mengele before a trial as a witness of the history. The trial has a bigger importance than the sentence. Justice is a funny thing. No matter how man tries to impose himself, it follows its own course. Mm -hmm.